as his mic and tends to travel here in Los Angeles, uh, California. And um, let's see if I can cross the street here. What's up, Retta? I'm gonna talk about this building here, but I wanna, um, let me see if I can actually do this first, then I'll cross the street to give you a better view of the building here. Say hello to some folks here as I walk. What's going on, Elizabeth? Hey, Marlene, how are you? Downtown Los Angeles here. So this is the building. Uh, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm uh, going to be uh, focused on highlighting buildings built in the 1970s in Los Angeles. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. Um, the 1960s and 70s and then into the 80s were very pivotal in terms of how downtown Los Angeles, but not just downtown Los Angeles, Los Angeles in general, uh, developed. And so some of the buildings I'm gonna show you uh, today are uh, pivotal to that in terms of construction. What's going on, ja uh, Chaz? Yeah, welcome. We're going to do a little tour uh, starting today. Um, and I'm going to start with this building here. I'm at the uh, Bank of America uh, Plaza. Let's see if I can go up here. It's a nice sculpture here. This is the Bank of America Plaza. This is Hope Street. Hope Street here. Yeah, it's a very nice uh, courtyard with the, the um, sculpture here that sort of evokes an animal, if you can sort of picture that. It's got a little park here. The plaza has a park. Uh, this is the second tallest building west of the Mississippi, but we're not going to talk about that one. We want to talk about this building. People have always thought that this building looks a little weird the way it's built in comparison to the street. Will Leo, how are you? Uh, so this building, this is the Bank of America building, guys. We are in the financial district. This is the Bank of America building. I'm going to try to pull back a little bit so you can see it better. But this building is 55 stories. Hey, Vera, how are you? This building is 55 stories and is made of granite. It's a 55 story building made of granite. And uh, when the architects built it, they decided to kind of build it a little bit askew versus, versus the street. Most buildings will actually face the street, right? So if you come in from Hope Street and you walked up, you, the building will be facing kind of this way. Where they built this building to be um, sort of instead of the parallel to the street, the architects decided to build this building uh, uh, true north. In other words, one side of the building is facing true north, the other side true west, south and east. So if I'm standing in front of the building here, I'm facing true north. And then the other side would be actual south, east, and west. Hey, Grenada Spice, how are you? So uh, maybe if I, let me cross the street here, and I'm going to come back to the courtyard and, and show you guys what I'm talking about. I think you might be able to appreciate it better when I'm across the street here. But they built this building not to be parallel to the street, but rather to be... Uh, true north to the um, true north to the um, 
to north, south, east and west. Why? <laughs> they just kind of wanted to do it that way. The architects were A.C. Martin and Associates and they built a lot of buildings. They built a lot of buildings in uh, several buildings in Los Angeles and they thought it would be cool to build a building it was built in 1974, by the way. It's an office building. Let me show it to you. Go this way. Hey, Ramon. So the building is kind of a little bit odd. It's facing, I don't know if you can pick it up what I'm showing you. I'm gonna go across here so you can see a little bit better. Then we'll come back to the plaza, but So this is Hope Street here, guys. Uh, this is Hope Street, and Hope Street kind of goes that way. And the building, rather than facing uh, Hope Street, it's a bit askew. And they just kind of want it to be, uh, it, they thought it was an interesting thing to do, to build a building, to face true north, south, east, and west. So if I'm in the building up here, I'm facing, from what I can tell from the sun, west. So let me give you a little bit of background, guys. Hi, Gina. Let me give you a little bit of background here. So, because of some of you who don't know, back in the early 1900s, in the 1900s, about 1903, a uh, beautiful day, by, by the way, downtown. Hi, Gina. Back in the 1900s, we're talking about 1903, uh, they built a building downtown, which I've sort of shown in a previous broadcast, and it was built 150 feet high. Los Angeles was exploding in terms of population and building and so on. Keep in mind that Los Angeles started in the area known as Pueblo de los uh, Pueblo uh, as a center. I've shown it before. Yeah, I'll show you uh, another building that I'll, I'll show you Twin Towers before they had the Twin Towers in, in, Los An in um, New York. The, tallest twin towers are here in Los Angeles. I'll show that to you. So, big of the background history. So, they built this building, which is now known as a Continental Building, 150 uh, feet high, 13 stories, and at the time, the the officials, the mayors and the councils and so on felt that that was a monstrosity of a building, 13 stories high, too high. So what did they do? They passed an ordinance that said no building can be more than 151 feet high in Los Angeles. You cannot build a building taller than 151 feet high so that one was 13 stories still there and that was in 1904 that lasted that that ordinance lasted for more than 50 years so more than 50 years no building in los angeles with some exceptions city hall city hall was already there some exception city hall and so on could be higher than that so Los Angeles the buildings are pretty much just kind of like low rises flat I'm gonna keep backing up here guys so you can see this building here and again the Sun is setting and I want to come out at this time to kind of show you where the Sun is setting so I can get a sense of which way I'm facing nineteen fifty six comes around they decide to change the rules and said okay we're getting rid of that rule now you can build higher nineteen fifty six 
So what happens in 19, uh, in the 60s following, there's an explosion of high rises that start to go up in the 1960s, 70s, especially. So they started really con like constructing in the 60s and then 70s and the uh, skyline of LA starts to change. It really start to, starts to change. Because suddenly you can build taller now. I'm gonna talk about this building as well. Also built in the 70s. So in the 70s, architects were kind of trying to do interesting developments and so on. And so when this building, when the architects decided to build this one, they decided we want this building to actually face true north, south, east, and west. So they positioned the building rather than facing the street. Hey, Peggy. Rather than facing the street, which is Hope Street, usually like that building, for example, you come into the building, the buildings are facing the streets. They're parallel to the streets. Most buildings are parallel to the streets. This building is not. This building is sort of turned. This building is turned to face true north, true south, true east, and true west. In, in other words, this would be uh, facing uh, west, east, north, and south. And that's why when people see this building, especially if you're driving on the 110 and so on, it, it in comparison to a lot of the other buildings, because you can see the sk skyline, in comparison to the way the other buildings are sort of like built, this one is sort of like a little turned. So if I'm standing in front of this building, I know that I'm which way I'm facing. If I'm facing north, if I'm facing south, if I'm facing east, or I'm facing west just based on this building. Again, it's called the Bank of America building. It's called the Bank of America building. 333. I'm sorry, I got the cars going by. 333 Hope Street, guys. Bank of America, 333 Hope Street. This is Hope Street. Hello, Pakistan. Three thirty-three Hope Street. And again, the architect is A.C. Martin. It's a quiet day here. Now the first building that was 150 feet high in LA is not kind of continental. It's just down the street. Oh, sorry. It's just down. <laughs> no problem. It's just down the street uh, that way. So you can. Um, but I'll, I'll show. I'll try to show that later. I did show it in a previous, in a previous um, broadcast. Let's go across the street here. I, I got to be careful here. As soon as the light changes, I'm going to cross. I got to cross that way and cross that way. I wanted to show you the building from the other side here.
And then, of course, there was a, uh, there's a reason why all the buildings, most of the buildings in Los Angeles are uh, flat top with heli heliport uh, to land helicopters. It's because they imposed that rule that building skyscrapers had to have um, the skyscrapers had to have um, a place for helicopters to land just for emergencies. I think you get a better view from it about it here. This is a nice view of it. You see, so you can just base it. It's almost like a sundial. You can kind of figure out which way is north and south based on where the sun is hitting it, right? The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And of course, there's Bank of America headquarters here in Los Angeles. Office, 55 stories. It's 55 stories and it's true north, south, east, west. It does not face parallel to the street, the main street, which is Hope Street. This is Hope right here. That's the Bonaventure. I'm going to talk about it in a bit. Also built in the 70s. I've shown it before. It's been in a lot of movies. The light changed. So let's cross the street, guys. the YMCA over here by the way this is the Y being it's kind of closed this is the Y here which building but it's surrounded by a whole bunch of buildings obviously and um, it's probably this one right here at, at least at the bottom that building right there actually let me come around this way There's a building right here. Yeah, things are quiet because, um, so this building is casting, the sun is over here. Behind here at Bonaventure, there's this lower building here and it's casting a shadow over here. And then um, anyway, on this side. Yeah, things are quiet, you know, we're sort of in a little bit of a still shut down pandemic. So not a lot of people out and about. It's a good view of it over here. Again, 55 stories made of granite. And this is an amazing place over here. This is the Hawaii. It has beautiful gardens and sculptures. It's a nice place to kind of escape and kind of sit around and have lunch. One of those quiet oases in Los Angeles, this building here. Let's see if we can walk around. So, so again, that's how, if you're driving on the 110 and so on, like 101 and 110, then you can see the downtown. That explosion happened in the 60s but really in the 70s and then into the 80s where the skyline of Los Angeles changed. By the way, Bunker Hill is that way. This is Bunker Hill. Please show the statues near you. What, those statues? All right, I'll come back around. I'll show them too. I'll show that. It's funny because I've been broadcasting a long time and there's a lot that I've already shown and I've shown this place in the broadcast before. The statues here at the YMCA, like this one, for example. So it's not, it's nothing new. Like this one. So then, uh, it's a gymnast. The gymnast, for example. Okay, I can show the gymnast and the building at the same time. What is this?
This is new here. I've never seen this on the... It said, we risk, we rise the Y. It's not about we rise. Anyway, lots of sculptures here at the Y. But I'm not really here to show the sculptures, but I'm trying to show them as much as possible. This is the Bonaventure here. The Western Bonaventure. Also built in the 70s. Bunch of movies film here, TV shows. And it's built with the, the um, elevators on the outside of the building. And it's like almost like a, uh, these rocket ship kind of, uh, you know, these cylinders like uh, around them. Also built in the 70s. What is the music center? The music center is just uh, we have um, downtown LA has a bunch of different areas. And the music center is where we have most of our theaters, um, music venues. They're all in one location and they're just up the street that way. We call it the music center. Civic center is where we have all the government buildings, the city hall, federal buildings, and that civic center. So that's what that's about. So music center is just the area, uh, entertainment area, where we have um, all the various venues for Broadway shows, concerts, the Philharmonic, the Walt Disney uh, Concert Hall. Uh, that's what the music center is. Now, if I hit this, this is not a, not a 70s building, but I can talk about it. Um, when I, if I look at this building at a certain angle, this is a Wells Fargo building. It's, um, it looks almost flat. Anyway, a 70s building here, there's some others, but let's talk about these two that are more immediate. And um, this building, when it was built, you see these walkways here. I don't know if you can see that guy standing on it. They have several of these that were built to connect to the Western Bonaventure. Hey V, what's going on? Zoe. Hey Gloria. So um, you see that pedestrian walkway connecting this building? You see this right here? Going into the Western Bonaventure. There goes the elevator going up, by the way, outside. There goes the elevator going up. This white one is another one. They built this, when they built the Western Bonaventure, they built it with the idea that they would have a people mover. So a people mover was gonna be built and they would have stations uh, here connecting. So this would be a station, a stop on the people mover. And there, how are you? St. John, welcome. So, the people mover never materialized. They never built it. So this is was built as a station, one of the stop, the stations to the people mover, and it was never built. So that's why you have these connecting various buildings uh, here where people can walk across. That's what those are about and it never materialized. But this is the Western Bonaventure again, uh, built in the 1970s. I've actually stayed here because I came here some years ago for a conference, a journalism conference. Beautiful inside, I've already shown inside before. Uh, it has the elevators on the exterior. Uh, movies are built here, uh, were made here. True Lives is one of those movies, for example. True Lies is Arnold Schwarzenegger was in that movie where he entered the elevator with a horse. And um, anyway, this is where that was filmed here. And um, very iconic building with the glass and the cylind like cylindrical exterior. And again, it's the Western Bonaventure Hotel. Beautiful hotel inside. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, there's also a revolving, there's also a revolving, uh, I'm not even sure if it's open because of the pandemic. I think it's closed, actually. A lot of the restaurants are closed, although restaurants are starting to reopen again, but it's closed. Uh, there's a restaurant upstairs, there's a revolving uh, restaurant above. That's, that's been closed because of the uh, pandemic. Restaurants have been closed. They've just been given the okay to reopen again. Yeah, it's closed. The bar is closed. Or it was anyway. I haven't checked if they're reopened already, but bars are closed. Pandemic shut down a bunch of stuff. Again, guys, 55 stories here revolving. Um, revolving. Uh, 55 stories made of granite. The Bank of America building that was built just to face. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I just did a screenshot that I didn't mean to do. You guys still there? I forgot. Uh, an unintended screenshot. <laughs> Let's go closer now, go into the plaza. Someone was asking me to show the sculptures. I'll show this one really quickly. There's a bunch, it's like a sculpture garden around here. Lots of sculptures. Um, there's this one, for example. So this is made of stainless steel and bronze. Anyway, lots of sculpture, nice garden here. This is the Y. The YMCA. This was just painted fairly recently. And it says we rise the Y, M, the Y. It says something else down here. Let me see what it says. But it says we rise. Yeah, very creative. There's that one I showed you, the, the, the um, gymnast. Um, this is the building here. I see the, the gym up there, workout. There's another sculpture here of some women running. Runners. As it says, downtown YMCA. I just want to see what this says here. They just painted this fairly recently. Oh, it says together we rise. The Y. So it says together we, we rise. There's another sculpture over here, but let me show you this one of the three women they look like native uh, women it's called the three uh, graces this is called the three graces it's from 1963 uh, Julie McDonald she's a Pasadena sculptor uh, is the one who did this um, she was born in 1926 and died in 1982 and she donated this to the Y, but it's called the Three Graces. By Julie McDonald. And this is uh, sculpted in 1963. All right, before we lose the light, I do want to go back over to the plaza. Another sculpture here.
This one is called Mind, Body, and Spirit, this uh, sculpture. Mind, Body, and Spirit. mind body and spirit let's go across the street here look crossing hope street there is the uh second tallest building west of the mississippi the library building that's the library right here in the middle that's actually our uh downtown library Okay, got the light here, 4th Street, crossing 4th Street, getting back that way. Coming off the freeway. Coming off the freeway here. So I'm gonna be showcasing and showing you around, not just Los Angeles, outside of Los Angeles buildings that went up in the 70s. We are observing the 50th year of the 70s. The 70s turned 50. And so, again, when LA, uh, this is Bunker Hill here, when LA removed the uh, restriction, the height restriction, suddenly the architects went wild and decided, <laughs> And the skyline obviously changed uh, with the with the buildings, and some of the architects were trying to be creative, obviously, and uh, some things that had never had not really been done before, and so they were trying to do things that were interesting, and put sculptures, and plazas, and like park-like plazas. And this one where the architect said, well, why do we have to build a building parallel to the street? Good old 70s, yeah. Why do we have to do parallel to the street? Let's turn the building and let it face north, south, east, and west. True north, south, east, and west. And that's what they did. Oh, let me see if I can cross, with a, cross the street here. Running, 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 running. I just want to show you the little plot. It's plaza, very park light inside, and the sculptor here. So it's nice. On a normal day, when there's not a pandemic, it's pretty busy with people going in and out. Um, obviously, people going in and out in the building, working. Sit, if it's a nice day sitting out in the park like area so um but it's not normal days normal time so it's quiet the building is it's saturday also so it's pretty shut down this is a steel sculpture here from 1973 Hey, G. Ford, how are you? From 1973 here. CA is the architect. It's a lot of windy on this side, guys, so I'm gonna to try to turn my back to the wind. And then, of course, they had the beautiful flowers. That's the thing about LA with its year round nice weather. We have flowers year round. This is the Wells Fargo building here. And again, I'm in the financial district. That's why you'll see all the bank buildings are here. These are all bank buildings, right? So Union Bank, U.S. Bank, West Fel uh, well Wells Fargo, obviously U.S. Um, hey Nicole, how are you? Um, Bank of America, National Bank. 
these are all like banking banking buildings so again on a nice day uh, in normal times when there's not a pandemic people will be sitting out here chilling out having lunch or just relaxing reading a book and then you've got this little area here that is beautiful because there are more offices below ground here and um, usually there's a waterfall over here water trickling down here right here yes lots of outdoor spaces where you can escape and relax so this is a water feature over here it's turned off now but again in when when we didn't have the pandemic water would be this would be a water fountain here so this is a water fountain and then the water comes through here and the water falls down into a pool that's down there and then there's water coming from these from here there and there from uh, three sides and the it's like a waterfall so there's this one there's that one over here and there's that one over there and there's a pool with blue cobalt blue tiles as you can see cobalt blue one of my favorite colors by the way cobalt blue and then the cobalt blue uh, pool down there so it's nicer so you'll hear water falling and it's really nice you know and then they have tables of course outside where people can sit and have lunch usually I had these tables out with the umbrellas but they've taken the t chairs away and you can't sit here anymore it's a social distancing um, social distancing seating area not in use periscope is probably not in full because i went um i didn't go uh landscape i went portrait because i knew i wanted to show tall buildings so that's probably why eddie portrait periscope is not showing full screen is you know hey sometimes they're not so compatible right so i'm in the landscape mode i'm sorry i'm in the uh, portrait mode so again, all around here, waterfall, um, uh, water fountains going up. And then the water cascading down that way. And people sitting all here at these tables. Yeah, Periscope is gone next month, March 5th, I think it is, March. So it's gone anyway. And then again, this is a good view of, this was the tallest building in California and the tallest west of the Mississippi until uh, a couple of years ago when the Wilshire Grand was built and overtook it. But you can go to the top, there's a, um, there's a slide, I'm looking at it right now, you can actually, a glass tube slide, you can, and it's outside exterior of the building. Yes, and it's outside of the building and you can just slide down from one floor to the next at the top it costs money to do that i forget how much they charge 20 something bucks i forget how much but you sit on a blanket and you slide down so there's a building that has a um exterior slide it's a little scary because you're actually outside of the building but the tube is enclosed is a tube and it's right there i can see it We won't have to worry about Periscope the next month, guys, so don't sweat it so much. Don't worry too much about Periscope. It's going to be gone. That's been decided. Um, so, uh, again, here it is. It's now the second tallest. It has the tallest rooftop in California. Hey, dude, how are you? The tallest rooftop in California. And again, this is a building I'm focusing on. The 
U.S. Bank building. We're kind of walking through the plaza area here of the U.S. Bank building. And the Western Bonaventure again, built, also built in the 70s. Hey Sarah, how are you? Welcome. Good to see you, Sarah. Thanks for the 50 cents. 50 cents. 50. <laughs> Little darling, I appreciate your award. Thank you. So you got a normal times, you'll have all these water features here, like water fountains really going and cascading down into the pool uh, down here. And it's a nice place to kind of come out and enjoy um an afternoon lunch or just to chill out read a book so guys i'm in these series of broadcast i'm showcasing buildings in los angeles built in the 1970s and uh, I'm starting with this one here that the architects decided to not make it parallel to the street like most architects were building buildings that face the street. So when you came out from the street, you'd walk straight into the building. Well, the architects decided to build this building to make it true north, south, east and west. So one side of the building is facing north, one side of the building is facing south, actual south, one side of the building is facing actual east, and one side of the building is facing actual west. And that's what they did with this building that looks a little bit turned from the other buildings that they built parallel to um, the street. Oh, this is a pretty, uh, I just noticed this. I just noticed these. Uh, these trees I don't know what they look like um, big bonsai trees what are these they, some sort of blossom are these cherry blossoms but they're not cherry <laughs> anybody know this tree they have some like white blossoms but they could be they could turn cherry after I don't think they're are they what are these trees guys look at the flower I'll get a close-up any botanists among us that's what the flowers look like up close but they're white and this is a young one here but these over here are more mature no clue yeah they look like some kind of blossom I don't know if they have like a label. Sometimes they put a label. Are they cherry? I mean, they're not cherry right now unless cherry blossoms turn pink after a while. Like all these trees are the same. But the flowers are, look like they're coming in. Beautiful. All right. And again, I was over there with the wires over here. Paul Hastings is here. Uh, so here we go. This is the angle I'm talking about, guys. If you stand here and you look at this building, this is the Wells Fargo building. Can you guys see it? I don't know if you can see it. It looks like it's totally a flat surface. Totally flat surface. I don't know if you can see it. Hey, Jesse, man. Can you see it, guys? This is a Wells Fargo building. It's actually a building, <laughs> but from a certain angle, which is this angle, 
the building looks flat like completely razor thin flat it's amazing this building <laughs> i actually have a photo of this building from this angle on my instagram yeah so from this angle you get that flat look rate like a razor thin flat you know razor thin building but it's not flat <laughs> but it looks that way from here isn't that doesn't that blow your mind that's like mind-blowing let me go up this way see if i can get it it's mind-blowing an optical illusion if you will And it's the Wells Fargo building. It's a bank. It's part of this. There's a plaza in here. It's part of this. This is one building. This is the other building here. West Far West West Wells Fargo. I think this is the first time I've actually shown it on scope. I've taken I've been I've taken pictures of it before. But I never actually broadcast it from the angle that makes it look, that shows how flat it looks. But it's actually triangular, the triangle, triangular. So that's what I'm talking about. After, the, after they lifted the height restrictions, architects started doing some interesting buildings to make them interesting. Like this one looking flat from one side. The round building here. And because we live in earthquake country, a lot of these bu these buildings actually have floors. That's why you're seeing what you're seeing here, for example. So for because we're in earthquake country here, these buildings, it costs more money than in other places that don't have earthquakes to build because they have to go deeper so some of these buildings but well, most of them have floors that go down so for example if I'm looking down here you'll see office buildings here below ground hey what's going on John I think that's John hey it is John hey John ho how are you so if I look down here you'll notice that their office is actually below uh, below ground because when they build these buildings so tall in earthquake country, in earthquake country, they have to go down. And again, the pool is off and all that, the water features are off. So, um, I'm gonna walk around that way a little bit, come back around, guys. So, I think tomorrow, just before the Super Bowl, I'm going to try to get some other buildings in uh, to show you, but tomorrow's Super Bowl, so everybody's going to be tuned. That well, Americans anyway, <laughs> will be tuned. Again, this is the building I'm featuring today. This is the um, the interestingly positioned uh, building, not parallel. The first building built in Los Angeles, not parallel to the street. They built it just to face north, south, east, west. Yes, yeah, someone told me that. I don't know what's going on on Periscope. I actually went live, John. I went live in portrait mode. And maybe portrait mode is having something to do with that. Just portrait mode and um that may be affecting it i wanted to go in portrait because i'm showing vertical rather than this way i wonder if i go this way will it work on periscope did it change on periscope if i do this <laughs> probably not i just i just uh turned the camera i just turned the camera um in landscape did it make a difference really oh okay 
weird. Yeah, I have approval, but Haps gives you, gives you an option before you go live to go in portrait or landscape. I chose, port, I chose uh, portrait because I'd be showing vertical. It didn't make a difference. John said, yeah, that's it. But maybe he was talking to, about something else. Did that make a difference, John? Or no? I don't know. Still small. Okay. Well, I go, I went the way I want. I, <laughs> I decided to go in portrait again because I was going to be showing skyscrapers. And it made more sense to do it that way. Still small, no difference. Okay, well, I'm going to go back this way. This periscope will be gone next month. Before you know it, it'll be gone. And, you know, what are you going to do? So, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So, I'm, I should be facing, west is on the other side there. Yeah, port, I mean, if you're on HAPS, it's, it looks fine, right? If you're on HAPS, it looks fine. All right, let's kind of walk uh, again, the Bonaventure here. 1970s building. Helicopters can land up here. This is a U.S. bank building. Uh, little area, let me go up to this. Oh, nice echo up here. Little kind of nook over here. With with some of our native plants. Seating area here. Little quiet area. Come talk. Again, the Wells Fargo building that looks flat from this angle. Watching from Haps is better. I have not gone live from Twitter. Someone asked me if I should go live from Twitter. Um, I might try that. Okay. Hey, John, thanks for the 50 cents. Appreciate you award. I just love how this building has that optical illusion thing to it that it looks razor thin from this point vantage point. From this vantage point it looks razor thin. The uh, Wells Fargo building. It just looks like paper. As thin as paper is just amazing. I mean, I don't know if you pick it up as a touring helicopter there, flying over it. Just giving a tour, or maybe just doing something else, who knows. That helicopter reminds me of a thing that LA people are used to it, but I'm not used to it. And that is police pursuits. We've had a police pursuit almost every day for the past week here in Los Angeles area, I should say, because the pursuit went into other cities. Uh, let's walk this way. And then the helicopters on kind of TV kind of show it. We had a slow pursuit, the longest, as I say, it's the longest uh, pursuit in, um, that the police has had. 
on Wednesday, I think it was, we had three pursuits that day. I don't get why people in LA, it doesn't seem to happen in other places, but why do people in Los Angeles, let me walk this way, run from the cops, steal cars and run from the cops. Oh God, I'm trying to avoid people and there's one coming over here, one coming over here. Let me see if I can go this way. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go this way. This is the man coming that way. Leap year was last year. This is not a, a leap year was 2020. That's probably why all that craziness happened. This is not leap year. Um, yeah, it was six hours, more than six hours. They chased this guy. <laughs> doing it slow and then there was three of them and one guy it, and they're all been like dramatic in terms of their ending okay i want to go this way and those guys aren't wearing a mask um let me see if i can go this way and they show it live on tv by the way they show all of them live on television with the helicopters following them it's like entertainment here in LA. One guy, one of them, the guy, the last one I saw, the guy ran into somebody's house and, they, and two people were in the house and the cops are looking for him. They couldn't find him and he was in the house, somebody's house. But they kept, they, there was two people in the car, they ran in different, it's just crazy. I just think it's weird. <laughs> Uh, that that happens in LA, in LA, and I can't think. Of course, there's police pursuits in other cities, but not the frequency that it happens here in Los Angeles. Hey Ed, thanks for the um, Namaste award. I'm gonna walk back to my car, guys. But anyway, this is what I wanted to highlight. We are gonna go. Um, tomorrow, I think, don't hold me to it. Tomorrow, I'll try to show you the first Twin Towers in the U.S. and the tallest Twin Towers in the U.S. So these were the tallest Twin Towers in the United States before we had the Twin Towers in New York. Thanks for subscribing. Before we had the Twin Towers in New York, LA had Twin Towers, and they were the tallest Twin Towers in the United States. A lot of folks don't know that, but it's really interesting. So tomorrow, I think I'll show you that in the morning. I tried to get out earlier today, and then a friend of mine called me from Thailand, and I got into this very long conversation with her um i wasn't expecting that and i was talking talking we were on the phone for like two hours i don't know how long so i wasn't able to get out early enough but and then you know my sister started texting me and i wasn't able to get out but it was nice to catch up with my friend who lives in thailand You, oh, you, you did press subscribe. A lot of army move. So we just started now downtown again. The Bank of America building here that's built kind of that way when the street is goes that way. Let's kind of get back to Hope Street. This is Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill started out as a um, mostly, and again, more seating areas back here, of course. You can kind of come sit. It's cool. Uh, Bunker Hill started out was a Latino neighborhood, mostly Mexican. Then they displaced a lot of them when they built the freeway. This is Bunker Hill here. Comes up this way, goes down to the library building down here. Hey, Quebec, great city, Quebec. 
Been there. Quebecois. Okay, let's go down here, see what's up here. Um, music Center, someone was asking earlier, it's back this way. We're gonna wrap it up here in a bit, guys, so. Alright guys, so here we are at my back at my wheels. Uh, this is all bunker hill over here. Let's go in the car and wrap it up. Hey guys, how are you? So hi everybody. Um, so that'll be it for now, I think. I mean, tomorrow I'll try to get out a bit earlier because I want to check out the Super Bowl later. Um, and um, I appreciate you all joining me here in Los Angeles. I did enjoy Quebec. Though you better speak French or you'll go to Quebec. I did enjoy it. <laughs> I went to, uh, I was in Montreal and I went to Toronto and then I went to Montreal and, you know, so on. I actually drove there, drove there from the U.S. Dorothy Chandler Pavilion is behind me. It's at Music Center. So just behind me, it's that way. The Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. That's our. That's a music center. Yes. That's the music center. Um, I don't remember. I don't. I tried a bunch. I, I don't think so. It was a long time ago. I don't think so. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. I would have remembered that. You were in San Francisco three years ago. Really nice city, San Francisco. One of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, maybe my next time. Yeah, I've always meant to go back. Uh, right now, I'm thinking where I can go next. I'm, I'm contemplating um, a trip. Uh, it's just a question of uh, whether I can get out and get out safely and get on a plane or, you know, how that goes with this uh, pandemic. I don't want to take unnecessary risk. So I might have to go soon because my battery is, my bet well, it's 20%, so I guess it's okay. Got to eat poutine in Quebec. Well, maybe I will when I go back. I think I was moving pretty fast when I went there, but I did spend more time in Toronto, and then I went to Montreal, and... Yeah, missing the travel for sure. So um, hopefully, hopefully this is the year that we put this pandemic behind us, you know. So um, hopefully this is the year we do that. So, hey, Nikki, how are you? Welcome. Hopefully this is the year where the pandemic is bye-bye and we, we don't have to wear these things, although I assume some people... I suspect some people will continue to.
Hey, you're welcome, Dick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I try to do some interesting scopes. Um, but tomorrow I'll show you the twin, the twin towers. Before New York had a twin towers, Los Angeles had twin towers. And they were the tallest twin towers in the U.S. before New York's twin towers. Give you a little bit of history about it tomorrow. All right, guys, my battery is running low. So I'm going to say goodbye. Check out the replay. Make sure you're following me. You subscribe if you're not. So we can um, connect tomorrow morning. Hopefully nobody. Um, if I get up in the morning and show you those, do a scope early in the morning. In fact, I will think I'll, um, I'll do a, um, a schedule it so people will know it's coming. You're welcome. You're welcome, Richard. Yeah, I'll schedule my scope for tomorrow. This, today I didn't schedule it. I just popped on live. But tomorrow I'll schedule um, schedule it. And thanks to uh, Haps, by the way, I saw I was watching Peter and Pablo's broadcast featuring different broadcasts. And they featured my broadcast on Daniel Pearl uh, in the journalism category. So that was cool. Uh, that, I went to Daniel Pearl's uh, burial site, there, his grave site. Anyway, you can check out that scope. That's still up. You're welcome. Welcome, Dick. Welcome. Hey, Dean. Sorry, I'm just about to leave. My battery is dying and I've been on for a while, but check out. Dean, check out the um, replay by all means. Thanks, Vera. So I'll catch you guys later. Arrivederci. Ciao tutti. Bye-bye.